back. Um, I saw the headline, and you know how I do. I'm going to read this with you, you get an initial reaction. As it happens, across my uh, uh, beautiful, uh, full lips. This happened 37 minutes ago, and um, it's so wonderful to see that Tucker Carlson agrees with me, according to this headline. So, if you agree with me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Be like Tucker. Be on Team Expert. Anyway, let's get into this. Short, uh, Tucker Carlson's downplaying Russia-Ukraine conflict urges Americans, why do I hate Putin? All right. I, I mean, I've been saying this time, it's like, I don't care. I mean, Putin sucks. But why do we hate Russia? Why is Russia this enemy? Russia has a smaller GDP than Canada. Okay, right now we have authoritarianism happening on our border. We have drug cartels running the country on our other border. We're surrounded. And we're worried about some country most people can't even spell. I couldn't find Ukraine on a map. I guarantee you, if it didn't have names and lines, I would not be able to point out Ukraine. I don't know anything about them. I don't know anything that comes out of there. I know nothing. But for some reason, oh, excuse me, I know one thing. I know that a certain laptop was involved with certain things in Ukraine. All right, let's do this. Shortly after the White House announced the first wave of sanctions against Russia for troops entering eastern Ukraine, a move described by President Biden as the beginning of an invasion, Tucker Carlson had a question for Americans. Why do you hate Russian President Vladimir Putin? And that's a perfectly legitimate question. The For every single thing that's brought to you, everything that's brought to your attention, whenever you notice something, the question, the word, it's a one-word question. It's my favorite question there is, and it's the most powerful question I've found, and it is, why? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? So, uh, Putin, who ordered his forces into the breakaway regions of Donetsk and Luhansk, in decision, Biden called a flagrant violation of international law. Okay, I'm going to throw out the little caveat there. There is no such thing as international law. There's international diplomacy. There's international treaties. But as far as law, there is no such thing as an international court or an international over-sanctioning body that has control over anything. Each country is completely sovereign, and there is no international law, uh, so to speak of. That is a false. That's a falsity. And if you try to make up an excuse for it, you're just you're trying to mumble something into that something that you want to be created and you want to exist. But in reality, it doesn't happen. You can say there's maritime law, right? There's a. Uh, 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 trade routes, what admiralty laws, what it's called. It's like when ships sink, you know, who has the rights to possessions. Uh, when it, there's a workers' comp, you know, the thing of like a workers' comp claim on a ship. Now, there are laws that cover those things that are recognized in uh, both ports. And that, but that, those are recognized because of treaties. We, we've sat down, we've come together and, as a world and said, these are the best way to do things. And nine times out of ten is the way we've always done things. It's uh, Oakham's razor. Think of that uh, philosophy. Don't try to overthink this stuff. It's very simple. You know, wherever you go in the world, that a red sign, a red octagon sign with white, or is it hexagon? I don't even know. Hexagon sign with white outlines is a stop sign. Anyway, um, Putin orders forces in the breakaway regions, uh, flag violation as law, sovereign uh, this week that Ukraine wasn't even, Putin says that Ukraine wasn't even a sovereign country at a time when there's been a sharp increase of violence in Ukrainian controlled parts of the East. Uh, but even uh, with the Ukraine conflict and Russia's interference in 2016, U.S. presidential election. Whoa, wait a second here. I did not say that, okay? I read this from the Washington Post. Uh, I am not saying, that, I mean, that was proven wrong. Uh, there was no Russian interference. Uh, that election happened pretty legitimately. You know, I know that there's probably always little pockets here and there, but that was a legitimate deal without, I mean, that was... 
that was proven there was no uh uh interference or anything like that there was uh it's like some like uh, russian backed people bought some uh, facebook ads for like twenty thousand dollars or something i forget what it is something ridiculous that it would not influence an entire election um so i'm not saying that uh fox news has described the tension in the region as merely a border dispute and wondered why americans should despise the russian president uh it may be worth asking yourself is this an opinion piece it is timothy bella whoever that is maybe worth asking yourself since it's getting pretty serious what is this really about that's what i've been asking since day one um why do i hate putin so much uh carlson said on his tuesday night show has putin ever called me a racist has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him Dude, th these are legitimate points. Carlson's dead on legitimate about this. Carlson has been accused of being one of the biggest cheerleaders for Russia. Oh, jeez. During the conflict, ask viewers of his top-rated Fox show a series of questions about whether Putin had promoted racial discrimination in schools, made fentanyl, attempted to snuff out Christianity, or bizarrely ate dogs. Dude, I mean, that's true. You saw the dogs in the crates that we were forced to abandon in Afghanistan. Let's see. Wow, this is longer than I thought. Uh, these are fair questions, and the answer to all of them is no. Uh, Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that, he said. So why does permanent Washington, permanent Washington, hate him so much? I like that term, permanent Washington. A clip of the segment, which has been viewed on Twitter more than 2 million times as of early wednesday yeah but how many times on tiktok uh has announced was announced was denounced by critics among those rep adam kinzinger one of the staunchest gop critics of his own party and former president donald uh, president donald trump the greatest thing about donald trump's uh ascension into power is uh exposing the gop people uh, in 35 seconds here, Terry Carson basically said, Putin isn't your enemy, your fellow American is. Mm. This is beyond dangerous, to say the least. Uh, well, it's obvious that um, Adam is a uh, drama queen and is reaching. Carlson's comments come as Ukraine announced Wednesday that the country planned to declare a state of emergency, power grab. Uh, the 30-day state of emergency, which is subject to approval by Parliament, could approve like their parliaments didn't mean anything. The Fox News host is among the conservative voices who have raised Putin, who has praised Putin in recent days. I love this. Washington Post is just doing this like, oh, you can't say anything positive about Putin. Nobody's saying anything positive about Putin here. What we're saying is, is like, there's a lot. Why, why are we in Ukraine? That's my argument. I don't care about Putin. If you want to go to war with Putin, go to war with Putin. Make that cause. I don't think there's a reason to go to war with him either. Aren't we tired of perpetual wars? I mean, that's the whole thing. The amount of uh, resources we save by not continually being in these wars. And here's the thing. We need to worry about the China problem. Well, we're sitting here. Biden said he, about going to the table with Putin and offering things such as arms reduction in a time when China is the, is the, uh, the fastest growing military and we do not need to be talking about arms reductions of any kind with a third rate country like Russia. Their GDP is less than Canada's. And Tucker Carlson, I'm glad to see he agrees with me. He's listening in, He's, he, you're agreeing to me. You know, this is what happens. This is what happens with, with a, a open media. Tucker, welcome to the program. Glad you're getting your news from a trusted source here. If you like trusted sources, you want to subscribe to my channel as well. I love you guys. I'm going to get out of here because the rest of the stuff is jibber-jabber fluff to make enough words for them to get paid. Till next time, adios, chachos.